Hello everyone and welcome to our final uh, discussion video of our series shareholders equity and for our last topic we will discuss diluted earnings per share ano and based sa uh, usap ko kanina sa mga ibang classmates yung mukhang takot na takot kayo sa topic na to kaya hopefully with this discussion video ay mas napasimple natin okay so kaya sa tinawag na diluted earnings per share di ba i first heard this term diluted dun sa kumbaga pag magtitimpla tayo ng orange juice di ba as we add more water, nagiging diluted yung orange juice. Ibig sabihin, less concentrated. So, nagiging malabnaw, nagiging, uh, nagiging lasang tubig na ulit imbis na juice. Ano? So, in essence, kaya tinawag siyang diluted earnings per share kasi habang may dinadagdag tayong mga tubig, ayan, tubig in the form of options or warrants, convertible bonds, and convertible preference share, bumababa yung ating earnings per share. So, how do we compute for the diluted earnings per share? Assuming all of these are diluted, we will add your preferred dividends and then after-tax interest expense at the top and then at the bottom on the denominator, we will add the additional ordinary share. Diba? Yung ating basic earnings per share kanina ay ito, profit or loss less preferred dividends divided by WAXO. Pero kapag diluted, we add back the preferred dividend and after-tax interest expense dito additional ordinary shares. And the most dilutive potential ordinary share is rank first. The least dilutive is rank plus. And kung meron tayong tatlo, laging ang dilutive dito, ang pinaka-dilutive is itong options or warrants. Why? Because it will always definitely lead to the decrease in our earnings per share. Bakit? Kasi madadagdagan yung ating denominator without any corresponding increase in the numerator. Kaya laging dilutive yan, di ba? Sa fraction natin, kapag na-add yung denominator, walang change sa numerator, laging bababa yung overall fraction natin. So kapag may option, laging rank 1. Next, convertible bond. So, yung ating convertible bond, yung bond magiging um, shares. Ano? So, we will add back the after-tax interest expense kasi nga ina-assume natin na yung bonds natin, what if na-convert siya? So, wala tayong after-tax interest expense. So, i-add back natin yan. And then the denominator would be the number of shares na additional. Kapag convertible preference shares naman, the numerator would be preferred dividend. And on the denominator, we would add the number of shares. Again, ang logic dito ay, assuming na na-convert yung preferred share, edi eh wala na tayong babayarang preferred dividend. That's why we add it back. Okay? And we stop our dilutive earnings per share computation kapag after ranking them, bawat isa kinukompute natin yung dilutive earnings per share kapag tumaas, hindi na dilutive, stop na tayo doon. And we'll show that later on in our example. For the loss per share, we will only present the basic one. Kapag meron tayong loss, ano, hindi tayo magpapresent ng diluted. Ano? Ang exception lang nito ay, eto, when potential ordinary shares do not decrease the loss per share, a diluted loss per share is nonetheless presented. Yun lang naman. No? So there's no use to present diluted general rule kung meron na tayong basic loss per share. Let's go to our final example of our series. So all throughout the year, an entity has maintained 500,000 ordinary shares. In addition, the entity also had outstanding share options covering 50,000 shares at an exercise price of 16 per share. Net income after 25% tax for the year amounted to 2.6 million. Okay, so for the basic earnings per share, that would be net income minus preferred dividend divided by WAXO. In this case, this would be 2.6 million. The preferred dividend is 400K. And then divide it by our WAXO of 500,000 ordinary shares. So our basic earnings per share would be 2.2 million divided by 500,000. BEP. Ayan. Okay. <clears throat> Ngayon, when we have our different dilutive options or dilutive securities, ganyan, bonds or preferred stock, isa-isahin na muna natin siyang i-compute. No? And we always start with the options kasi nga lagi siyang dilutive. Options or warrant. And here are the steps. Ano? And by the way, merong kulang sa problem yun. No? Kaya bonus na tong problem na to for the dilutive earnings per share if you are part of my review class. So, kaya ito, 
we assume natin that the market price is 20 per share. So here's how you always compute for the options. No? Kung ilan yung shares na iaan sa baba. Hindi 50,000. No? Ang gagawin natin first, shares or options, it would be 50,000. And then, we multiply it by the exercise price. The exercise price is 50. So that would be 750,000. That would be the total proceeds. We divide it by the market price, which is 20, assumed to be 20. So, ang magiging sagot natin ay 37,500. Ano logic nito? So, assuming na na-exercise yung option, may papasok sa ating pera na 750,000. At ang ina-assume natin, these proceeds will be used to purchase here at 20. Kaya, 37,500 yung parang as if treasury shares natin. So kung gusto mong mabilis, options times exercise price divided by market. And so now, the shares from our option is 50,000. And then, we deduct our as if treasury here. At 37,500. So, itong excess na to, ito yung gagamitin natin sa denominator. And this is already rank 1. Kasi yung iba, merong effects sa numerator and denominator. Next, it would be, unahin natin si preference here. So, let's compute it individually. I-isolate natin. Yung kanilang preferred dividend is 400,000. We divide it by the number of ordinary share, which is 50k times 2. So this is 4. Yan yung effect niya. Check mo. Basic earnings per share 4.4. Dilutive ba? Okay, so sa ngayon, dilutive siya individually. Next our convertible debt. So we have the after-tax interest. So you have to be careful here because if you look at the issue one state, it's October 1, 2023. Kaya yung ating after-tax interest would be 5 million times 10% times 1 minus the tax rate. Yung tax rate natin, 25%. And then multiplied by the number of months. October, November, December, three months out of work. $93,750. It will also affect our potential ordinary share. Because it would be $75,000. Pero di, di ba yung average natin? So $75,000 times. 3 months out of 12 breath. So, our isolated case is 5. Dito pa lang, 5 versus 4.4, alam na natin na anti-dilutive to. So, this will not affect our computation anymore. We ignore this. So, ang ating dilutive lang ay itong options at itong preference. So, now, we have our numerator and denominator. Under basic earnings per share, kopyahin na muna natin, our numerator is 2.2 million and our denominator is 500. Kaya yung ating EPS ay 4.4. Then we add the effect on our option. Lang effect sa numerator, may effect sa denominator. So our total would be 2.2 and 512,500. So, bumaba yung ating earnings per share. Big sabihin, tuloy lang tayo. Next is our preference share. 400,000. And then the denominator, 100,000. So, our dilutive earnings per share, assuming na meron na tayong preference share. Bumaba pa rin ba? Yes. And then, we ignore convertible debt. Kung sakali, ano, na dilutive ka dito, 
may, may mga ganun kasing problem. Diluted sa isolated, pero dito, imbis na four, lower than 4.29, naging 4.30, 4.35. We ignore this, even if isolated, diluted siya. So, mag stop tayo ng dilutive na natin, 4.29. But in this case, tuloy-tuloy lang naman na bumaga. Kaya, our dilutive earnings per share would be 4.24. So, that's it for our discussion. Thank you for your patience in watching all of these videos. I hope that you're able to follow everything. If you do have any questions, feel free to message me in our messenger, GC, or directly to me. Thank you, everyone, and God bless in your review. Bye-bye.